Labour's big win in the July election was supposed to be a fresh start for the UK. People were fed up with years of conservative rule and all the broken promises, so Keir Starmer and his team swept in with big talk about fixing the economy and easing the pressure on struggling families. For a brief moment, it felt like things might actually get better. But that moment didn't last. Fast forward to October 2024, and Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, dropped Labour's first autumn budget. It was meant to be their big reset moment, a chance to show the country they meant business. Instead, it's turned into a complete nightmare, with people from all sides questioning if Labour even knows what it's doing. The biggest issue. Reeves decided to bump up inheritance tax on estates over £1 million. She pitched it as a way to pump more money into the NHS and fund green energy projects. Sounds good on paper, right? But in reality, it's gone down like a lead balloon. Labour's working-class voters feel like they're being left behind, and middle-income families, who are already feeling squeezed, are now getting hit too. It's like Reeves didn't stop to think about how many people this would anger. And to make things worse, inflation's still sky-high at 6%. Reeves promised to get that under control quickly, but here we are, still watching prices climb while wages stay flat. Families are struggling to keep up, and small businesses are taking a beating. It's hard not to feel like Labour's completely missed the mark. On top of everything else, Labour's decision to keep the freeze on income tax thresholds, something they inherited from the Tories has only added fuel to the fire. Technically, it's not a direct tax hike, but let's be real. It works like one. Millions of people are being quietly bumped into higher tax brackets just because of inflation, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. Families are already struggling to make ends meet and now they're being hit with higher taxes, without even earning more in real terms. Rachel Reeves defended the move, saying it's necessary to keep public finances in check. But here's the kicker. The fiscal deficit is still expected to hit a whopping £140 billion by the end of the year. That's hardly the picture of responsible spending Labour's been trying to sell us. People are asking, if we're tightening our belts, where's all the money going? And honestly, it's a fair question. Reeves and Starmer seem stuck between wanting to play it safe like the Tories and trying to fund all their big promises, and it's just not adding up. Instead of inspiring confidence, it feels like Labour's fumbling their way through this. For a party that promised a new direction, extending this stealth tax was like pouring salt in the wound for voters who are already feeling let down. It's becoming clearer by the day that Labour might not have a solid plan for steering the country out of this mess. The UK's economy isn't looking any brighter and Labour's not exactly helping themselves. GDP growth for the third quarter of 2024 came in at a dismal 0.1%. That's barely above flatlining, and as everyone worried about a potential recession, businesses are already feeling the squeeze, and Labour's decision to raise corporate tax to 25% hasn't gone down well at all. Big corporations and small businesses alike are calling it a kick in the teeth when they're already struggling to stay afloat. What's worse is how this is hitting Britain's reputation internationally. Remember all that optimism when Keir Starmer promised stability? Yeah, that's evaporating fast. Foreign investors are starting to look elsewhere, saying the UK feels like a risky place to grow their money. Even the Financial Times is ringing alarm bells, reporting a sharp drop in foreign direct investment coming into the country. Reeves keeps insisting that Britain is still open for business, but the numbers are telling a very different story. This corporate tax hike might have been sold as a way to fund Labour's ambitious plans, but it's backfiring hard. Instead of encouraging growth, it's pushing investment away at a time when the economy desperately needs a boost. Businesses feel alienated, and people are starting to question whether Labour even has a clue about how to turn things around. For a party that promised to rebuild the economy, this just feels like a series of goals. Housing is turning into a massive headache for Labour, and it's hard to believe they didn't see this coming. Starmer talked a big game during the campaign about fixing the housing crisis, but so far it's all talk, no action. Renters and buyers are feeling the squeeze more than ever. In London, rents have shot up another 15% compared to last year, £2,500 a month on average now. Who can afford that? And let's not even get started on house prices, they're still sky high. Labour promised to build 300,000 homes a year, but the reality? It's nowhere near what's needed. Reeves tried to throw councils a bone in her budget by giving them extra cash to speed up planning approvals. Sounds good on paper, 
but experts are already saying it won't make a dent unless they tackle deeper issues in the construction industry. Basically, it is for more delays, higher costs, and a housing market that keeps locking people out. Then there's the whole green energy thing. Labor hyped up their £28 billion green prosperity fund as a game changer, but where's the money going? Less than 10% of the promised budget has been spent so far. It's not looking good. Windfall taxes on energy companies were supposed to fund these projects, but now they're tangled up in legal challenges. Renewable infrastructure is stuck in limbo, and even hardcore environmentalists are losing patience. Labor's problems aren't just external, there's a full-blown rebellion brewing inside the party. Reeves is getting slammed from all sides. The left-wing MPs are fuming, claiming her centrist policies are a complete sellout of Labor's progressive values. On the other hand, the moderates are warning that the budget is a disaster for business, and it's pushing away swing voters. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. To make things even messier, there are reports of shouting matches in cabinet meetings. It's like a pressure cooker in there. With factions pulling in opposite directions, some backbenchers are now pushing for a wealth tax instead of the inheritance tax hike, which only adds another layer of chaos. Starmer's trying to keep the peace, but at this rate, party unity feels like a distant dream, and the public? They're not happy, either. Labor's honeymoon phase is well and truly over. Polls from November show their lead over the Tories has collapsed to just 4%. Earlier this year, they were soaring in double digits. Now it's looking like a freefall. People are frustrated, and it shows 62% of voters say they're unhappy with how Labor's handling the economy. Ministers can't seem to get their stories straight, and every conflicting statement just chips away at whatever trust is left. It's starting to look less like a government, and more like a circus. The international response to Labor's handling of the economy has been brutal. Global financial institutions have downgraded the UK's growth outlook for 2025, blaming poor policy execution and a major loss of investor confidence. The International Monetary Fund IMF, has made it clear Britain's failure to address long-standing issues like low productivity and a skills shortage is pushing the country toward a stagnation trap. Starmer's government, which promised to shake things up and deliver change, now finds itself accused of keeping the same old economic problems alive. What's more, Starmer's leadership is starting to look shaky. Once seen as the steady hand who would guide labor through choppy waters, he's now under fire for sticking by Reeves, even as the public becomes more and more frustrated with the economic mess. Rumor has it that behind closed doors, Starmer is frustrated with how things are going, but is too hesitant to shake up his cabinet so early in his leadership. This indecision has given his critics within the party more ammunition, and there's even talk of a leadership challenge if the polls keep slipping. The autumn budget, which was supposed to be the defining moment of Labour's economic strategy, has turned out to be a massive own goal. Instead of showing the public that Labour has a clear, bold plan to fix the economy, it's only revealed the party's internal divisions and its inability to deliver real change. With the economy still struggling and Labour's popularity plummeting, Starmer and Reeves now face an uphill battle to rebuild trust. Whether they can turn things around or end up as a one-term government will depend on their ability to face the economic and political mess they've created. If you found this video interesting, please like, share and subscribe. Until next time.